a cartoon that slipped through the cracks. I'm Rebecca Lieb. I'm Jason Horton. And this is Ghost Town. just growled instead and made himself look very big and mean. He said, I am Crack Master. But just then the wall plaster began to crumble to the floor and where the monster stood were only beams of wood. He destroyed himself trying to be mean. In 1975, a popular children's show known as Sesame Street oh, had a cartoon, an animated short as part of it. And Sesame Street was known for repeating the same content over and over. That's yeah. How kind remember of that angry. crayon factory one? Do you, you got to remember that where they go to a crayon factory and make crayons. I don't remember that. One. What? I feel like I've seen that 400 times and I haven't watched Sesame street in like 30 years. So there's this one animated short. Okay. That disappeared. Hmm. It was there and then it was gone. Nobody talked about it. And then it became somewhat of a cult phenomenon on what it is and trying to find it. What? Let's start from the beginning. I'm going to I'm going I'm to get you there, Rebecca. Thank you. Please. I have so many questions. There was an animated short called Cracks, officially, unofficially, and it was the story of a girl, and it was some. By a, you know the voiceover person, mm-hmm. the kind of it was like a kind of a sing songy thing, and it was about a girl who was just at home. It was a rainy day; she couldn't go outside, so she looked up at the cracks in her wall. Hmm. This is we're talking 1975. Yeah, so you can kind of put. No one cared about paint chips then. And lead. What she would do is look at those cracks in the wall and imagine them as animals. And kind of create like a little world, oh, a little imagination. I like that. So throughout the very short, it's only about 90 seconds, you know, one crack became a turtle, another one became a camel. At the end, they end up meeting the crack master. Oh, it's boy. It's a scary face. He's mad. In the crack master's anger, gets so angry, the paint chips start to break and fall off onto the floor. So the crack master ends up destroying himself with his anger, I guess. Whoa, there's a lot of messages in here. And uh, would I want my child to watch this? I don't know. It's it's pretty it's pretty dark. But it, the message isn't dark, but it's just visually it's very dark, especially looking back. And Sesame Street at that time, which was important, it was very diverse. Mm-hmm. They – Wanted to make sure it represented people that were watching it and maybe what was going on in their world. So it wasn't just like, hey, all you kids that look exactly the same, we look, we yeah, all look the same too. Everything's great and shiny. It everything's like, great and shiny. You might live in a place with lots of cracks in your walls. Use your imagination to find a, a terrifying overlord inside of them. The idea that enough people could resonate with the fact is, I know you're staring at Cracks in your wall. Mm-hmm. 1975 was a tough time economically. I feel like that's yeah. like a touchstone And no one was like, hey, maybe we shouldn't – maybe we should go with shadows because there's no shadow cocaine epi- epidemic. Yeah. Maybe. I don't know. Well, the, the drug thing is something that comes in. This is kind okay, of why okay. it's a fail. Okay. I think. Well, one, it's a fail because it just it's was there like and was of, gone. Yeah. There's a lot of fail elements to it. So it first appeared on – December 31st, 1975, New Year's Eve. The season season seven had just started on the first. Mm-hmm. It's a brand new season. And then the short only appeared 11 times. And then it was gone. By like beginning of 1980, middle mm-hmm. of 1980, it just disappeared. Hmm. No one knows what they don't know. You don't know like what happened to that one animated short, but yeah. somebody remembered it. And posed to the internet, hey, does anyone remember does anyone remember this short that was on Sesame Street? I remember it. I can't find it. Is anyone else curious? Mm-hmm. And I've gone down a little bit of 
a, a rabbit hole in general of people trying to find like a song. They're like, there's a song and I cannot find any record of it. Interesting. This movie, I, I cannot find any I record of it. it. I remember it. So this is one of those things. And in 2008 is kind of where it began. So on December 20th, 2008, Jennifer Bourne on her blog, Tale of the Rat. Oh, it's not called The Bourne Identity? No, I don't oh. I mean, yeah, the Born Identity was already out. Probably she probably could have. She could have really capitalized her last name. But this no, she went fine. with Tail o' the Rat. <laughs> not as catchy. It's not as good. I will say, I'm sorry, Jennifer. And you know, to go back and fix her branding now seems like it'd be. We're for hire. We're not doing anything. We're sitting at a table recording this. So contact us. So she asks around, and other people have been looking for it as well, including John Armand. A voiceover mm-hmm. artist. He's like, I'm looking for this as well. So the search was kind of on Ooh. now. They kind of created this thing of like, let us find this yeah. lost piece They're like, piece we're of- sick of Cran Factory. We need crack imaginations. Cracked. Yes. Cracks. It's called Cracks. Crackmaster okay. or Cracked. Or Crack. crack. Master. Now I don't even know. Crackmaster and crack, crack are the two terms that it goes nightmare. by. Nightmare. Okay. And 2008, I mean, the internet is robust, but not not as much as now. I feel it's like really now, not. I think I forget how lesser the internet was then, um, like going back and how limited. Because again, that that was more than 10 years ago, you know? And it's so much has changed. Like the ability to find mm-hmm. information on many different levels from many different people. Back then, it wasn't as easy. Mm-mm. But it didn't take too long because – John Armin got a copy of it. <gasps> How? So according to Muppet.Fandom.com. Yeah, baby. He eventually received a fax from an untraceable oh number. Oh, my God. A fax in 2008. That is still too late. I'm sorry. And he offered to send him a copy of the short on the condition that he not share it publicly. What? And John Armin agreed. And shortly after, he received an envelope with a DVD with the short. I was not making – I was making a joke, but I'm, I was not far off when I said – a package unmarked on his doorstep. That is almost that. Plus a fax machine? This gets better and better. Daniel Wilson from Lost Media Wiki, he got a copy of it via anonymous email in 2013. What? Yeah. Is it from the cracked face in the animation? Well, you have 2008 Who controls this? to 2013. Uh-huh. So some time has passed. So maybe it got around or more people had it. Or 2013, again, a little more recent. Mm-hmm. You know, you can contact, maybe there's archives or... Yeah, there's or, some Sesame Street logger who's been there since the 60s, and he, he reads Reddit religiously, and he's like, I'm going to help these guys. I'm going to help Jennifer Bourne. <laughs> and he from, goes through he goes through his files, yeah, because the DVD's like, in a tail file. of the blog. <laughs> no. <laughs> Just be the Bourne identity. Yeah. It's simple. 2019, Studio 360 did mm-hmm. a pretty wider release on it, like a wider investigation... And the host, Kurt Anderson, investigated it, and he talked to Sesame Street executive at the time, Benjamin Lehman. Mm-hmm. Lehman says, I don't know what happened to the short, but he suggested the liberal use of the term crack could have been viewed as inappropriate during the war on drugs in the 1980s. However, that that doesn't add up to me because mm-hmm. the term crack wasn't really, even on a small scale, really wasn't – introduced until 1981 and that's yeah. that's just I mean, in a small i mean of course this might be like oh the cia knew about it <laughs> like when they were trying when they brought it to the, the streets uh, you know whatever if you believe yeah, those yeah. conspiracy theories but it wasn't like people were like oh I, I hear crack in in 1980 i don't know 1979 I mean, it's hard to say because i i was not around because i'm very young um just so you all know very young barely legal uh but i feel like is that something where it's like in the 11 times it was aired a couple times in the late seventies and then like something hit where like once it aired and, and crack, cause even as a kid, I think I recognized like crack drugs, like but you'd, have, you'd have to be, I, I was, I was of the age during that time as mm-hmm. a kid who would have watched it probably mm-hmm. didn't watch it statistically, but the term, I mean, I remember when crack became the lexicon and I even searched, mm-hmm. I was like, well, help. Cocaine, but you know, the term crack cocaine would be mm-hmm. the first thing, and then the term crack would be the, the more shorthand. common, yes, the, the shorthand version of it. And the earliest usage I found was 1981. Okay. So I don't buy it. Okay, okay. 
I do think maybe some people maybe called in. It's like, I don't want to see a girl who, you know, it's, it's, she's African American. Mm hmm. May, and I'm just – this is a huge maybe. It's very depressing. Maybe they're like, hey, I don't want my kids. They made them uncomfortable. I don't know on what level. And this is why I consider this a fail. Also, it is a little bit dark and scary. Mm-hmm. That I will give. And I don't know if how real it is kind of scared people. And they're like, you know what? This is still yeah. too – it's not worth it. And they just took it off and – Too dark. Too dark. I don't know. I also think that maybe someone, maybe someone who is in recovery or someone who has kids, you know, like some people who perhaps have some history with crack cocaine that would know about it before kind of the cultural mainstays of the word crack could have seen it and been like, "Mm, no. I think it's because crack has been around for so long, the term, and it's such a popular, I mean, it's part of lexicon, you Mm -hmm. know, something, you know. The term crackhead, you know, mm-hmm. it's a terrible thing to say, but I mean, that's... No, it's true. It's it's the reality of the term Very and the word used, and how, yeah. uh, you know... That. But also, I think about back in the 70s and 80s and how, like, I think there was more permission for things to be darker for kids, too. Like, I don't know, you can probably speak to that a little bit, too. Um, but that doesn't feel like it quite resonates. And I haven't seen this, so I can't speak to this specific animation, but that feels like a little off too in ways because of all the things that I've viewed from that time that for kids where it's like, are we okay? Okay. This is pretty, pretty dark, but I guess kids enjoyed it anyway. But it just takes one person to remember this cartoon, put it out there on their blog. And then to have Mm -hmm. one other person be like me too. I was also looking for this. And then that spark kind of like, hey, let's find this this lost I thing. Love it. I, I mean, I've been really into like lost they media. Teamed up. Yeah. I, I think it's very inspiring. And I think, you know, like the Mandela effect too, mm-hmm. where you misremember like the Berenstein Bears versus the Borenstein Bears or whatever. I think a lot of the times with stuff in our past, in our childhood, we're like, I think I remember it that way and I'm not quite sure, but like it really resonated for me. Like it really had an impact. And you're like, it probably was just me. But finding someone else to be like, oh my God, no, I had that same experience. Like the internet is such a unifying thing in some ways and so weird. And then actually getting it. Yeah. Through someone faxing slash emailing anonymously. How great is that? Three, uh, Studios 360 also contacted the person who provided the voice and the song, Dorothy <gasps> Moskowitz. Now, Dorothy. a music teacher in California. She had no idea that people cared or it, it probably for her. She? Yeah. It's, you know, maybe a, another job probably hasn't thought about it. And she had no idea it was something that she had worked on that had a cult following. But she said of the recording experience, it was the most goddamn strange recording session I ever attended. Whoa. Why? I want to know why. Was it the content? Was it weird in different way? Was How did they create? I want to know the whole production history of this cartoon. I also, I, I don't know if I told you this, but I submitted to Sesame Street uh, to write on it. D- didn't get the job, just so all of you know. But I yet you didn't that. get the job yet. If I mentioned this, would I have gotten the job? Be like, cracked. I'm so, I, like, I, I'm so good cracked? at research. Yeah, bring back cracked. <laughs> Send an anonymous fax. Hi, I'm Jake Deptula. I'm Jamie Beebe, and we are your hosts of Strictly Stalking. In each episode, we're going to bring you a new stalking case covering the ins and outs of each stalker, their victim, and their stories. Is he in the house with you? Uh-huh. Does he have any weapon? Yes. What does he have? Is it a gun? Uh-uh. A knife? Yeah. She hated me so much, she found my stepmother, friended her, and then was caught making a plan to attack me with my stepmother. He shows up to my gallery and he's wearing a spacesuit. He looks at me and he goes, you look like Jessica Rabbit and Lilu from The Fifth Element. And then he looks at me very intensely and he goes, and I'm going to stalk you. We hear about the cops not really doing anything or not really caring about the crime of stalking. There's a lot of victim shaming for stalkers. The predator who had been stalking me for 44 years was starting to really interfere with my life and my freedom a lot more than he had been. One of those random messages on my DM that was like, 
I'm coming and I'll see you on this date. I was like, I'm not responding to this. And then it was like a verification of a flight got sent. All of a sudden I hear a knock at the door. So I open the door and there's a six foot something gentleman standing in front of me with a backpack and he looks at me and he says, are you Aaron? I'm kind of panicked because this isn't Larry. He followed me to my workplace. And he grabbed me, pushed me into the door and, and was like, unblock me, unblock me. Why do you block me? I'm Jake Deptula. I'm Jamie Beebe. Strictly Stalking premieres on January 21st. Please subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Like, oh my God, this person won't stop texting me, stop calling me. She keeps showing up everywhere. And then that's when it's like, you're like, oh, shit. <laughs>